few people at the picnics over the summer. Um, even though it's been a mix of weather, it's been great to see people, especially to see the children and the teenagers who all seem to have grown by about 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 a metre or two metres. They seem very tall now. They, they may have been in lockdown, but they've been growing. It's just great to see everybody. Um, and we're back online now um, for this next eight weeks um, with a brand new sort of setup. Um, and a brand new theme and very exciting I think for me particularly that for the first time ever I think in our church's history um, all the children and all the teenagers and all the adults we're all going to do the same story um, and the same message so that's a, a very exciting um, time and it's going to go right through over these eight weeks and we're praying that God would come and work in our hearts um, a new thing a deeper thing uh, making Jesus uh, more real to us. Um, so yeah, the story we're doing, and you may have picked this up already by now, um, is the story of a man called Nehemiah. Uh, and here he is. Um, we don't know a huge amount about him, but we do know that he was a follower of God. Uh, we know that he lived about 500 years, 450 years or so <coughs> before Jesus was born, so about two and a half thousand years ago. Um, we're hoping maybe to get the story of or his story out to flame um, and maybe to tribe as well in, in some book form or other. Um, but over the next eight weeks, Nehemiah is our man. And he lived in a place called Susa, uh, which is in Iran, um, which was then part of this huge empire called the Medo-Persian Empire, a huge empire that stretched across the Middle East. Um, but what we do know about Nehemiah is that his family and his ancestors and all his people and his culture didn't come from Iran. They came from a country a thousand miles away called Israel. And I don't know if you remember, but God had promised Abraham, here's a picture of him, what he might have looked like, a land, that the Jewish people would have a land. Um, and God gave them this land and Moses took them into it. And God said to them, you can have this land um, and you can live in this land and I will bless you in this land, but don't break my rules. Don't break my commandments, which I've given you for your good. And don't worship idols. And despite these warnings, the children of Israel again and again strayed from God, like we sometimes can do. And they worshipped statues and idols and they turned from the living God. They broke many of his commandments and they had some great and amazing kings and leaders who brought them back to God. But they also had evil kings and also evil queens. Um, and God sent his prophets to those kings and queens. Here's a picture of Elijah coming to Ahab and Jezebel, warning them, saying, you're leading the people in the wrong direction. The people are turning away from me. And if you continue to do this, God will come and he will let the enemies of Israel come in and he will scatter the children of Israel and they'll become slaves and captives and many may die. And again and again, God warned them. And after hundreds of years, God finally said, enough. And he allowed the enemies of Israel to come in. They flooded into the cities and ultimately they came into Israel and many people were taken as slaves and captives and servants. Um, they were exiled out to many other countries and among them was this man Nehemiah's family. So his parents would have been taken captive and taken to Iran. Um, you can see on the map it was a huge journey. This was a thousand mile journey. It would have taken two or three months to get there. They would have had to walk. It would have been very hard and they got there and they began to settle in these other countries and probably our man Nehemiah, here he is again, um, would have been born in Iran. But he would have grown up knowing the story. He would have known this story so well. He'd have heard, we used to have our own land. We had a land flowing with milk and honey. We had a land which had vineyards and harvests and God blessed us and blessed us there and our families were blessed. Um, and we had peace at times with our enemies and we had mighty kings like David and Solomon who were known throughout the earth and we had a temple where we had vast meetings and we worshipped God there. We had our own land and he would have felt the sadness and the, the sorrow of this. But he also knew that at around this time, which was 445 BC, so 445 years before Jesus, the exact year when this story begins, he knew that at that time there were groups of Israelites beginning to go back to the land. Ezra had led a huge group back. There were others who'd gone back. 
and they were beginning, just beginning to rebuild Israel. And some of the people from Susa, where Nehemiah was, including his brother, had gone all that way to Jerusalem to see what was going on. And a day came when they arrived back. Here they are arriving back. And this was going to be a really significant day for Nehemiah because this was the day when he was, God was going to begin to call him to a new work. And when they came, he said to them, what was it like? What's going on back in Israel? And he wanted to hear a good report. He wanted to hear God is blessing Ezra and all the others and the cities being built up and there's more people coming back and God is blessing them. But that wasn't the report he heard. They said, no, they said, the people are in terrible distress. They're being attacked by their enemies. The walls are all broken down around the city. So any enemy army could come in and there are enemies already surrounding Jerusalem. They said it's a desperate situation. They said, we've been there. We've seen it. We've seen how serious this is. And then there's an amazing verse. It's in Nehemiah 1. And Nehemiah says, when I heard all this, I sat down and I wept and his heart was soft. His heart was like good soil and he didn't think, well, I don't care. I don't care what's happening in Israel. My life's all right here. I'm okay. It, what does it matter about God's stuff? I, I, I'll just think about my life. But he didn't think that way. He wept about it. And do you remember like with George Muller where the whole story began in his heart? So the same thing with Nehemiah, this story, this great spiritual story begins in one man's heart. He's so moved by what he's heard. It says in the Psalms, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. And he was one of these ones sitting down and weeping. And he began to pray and he began to cry out to God. And it says sometimes he didn't eat because he was so busy praying. And he said, oh God of heaven, you are the God who keeps your promises. We need your help. It says as well that sometimes he would wake at night and he was praying night and day at times because something was so happening on his, in his heart. And he began to bring his arguments to God. And he said to God, you promised that if we turned away from you and we worshipped idols, you would scatter us and send us out from our land. And you've done that, Lord. But he said, remember this, God, you also promised that if we would turn back to you, you would bless us and you would bring us back into our land. He had a choice, you see, when he heard that message. He had a choice whether he could just... Um, despair and give up and think oh this is hopeless this is a desperate situation that was one of his choices or he had another choice he could have said okay guys let, let's do something about this let's get an army together let's all gather people up together let's go back and sort this out but he had a third choice which was he decided to pray he went to God and he began to cry out to God and as he cried out to God God began to put a plan into his heart and he prayed over many weeks and in the end he prayed over many months and by the end of those months he knew what the plan was. And we too, when we hear things and we hear bad news or things have happened that we, we don't want to happen in a certain way, uh, we have choices, we can despair and give up and think, well this situation's never going to change. Or we can think, right, I'm just going to sort this out myself because God doesn't seem to be helping me. Or we can take that third choice that Nehemiah took and he went to God. He began to cry out to him and he began to pray over those weeks and months. Um, and as this plan came into his heart, he began to pray a new prayer. God, give me success. Give me success. And we'll hear next week um, what happens um, and whether God answers that prayer and in what way God answers the prayer. Let's just pray, Lord Jesus. Uh, we thank you for this wonderful story. Thank you for this man. Uh, you told us to follow in the footsteps of those who inherit the promises. And Father Nehemiah inherited your promises. And Lord, we pray that just as something wonderful happened in his heart and he turned to you in a deeper way, Lord, we pray over these weeks, could something happen in our hearts, Lord, uh, that we would pray and seek you. Uh, in a new way, Lord. Really ask this in your name. Amen. Amen.